This is um, our introduction class at Christ Church to Watercolor. And the painting that we're going to do today, or each one of you are going to do, is this um, poppy picture. We're calling it Poppies in a Meadow. Okay, now we're showing some reference photos of poppies in a field. And you're seeing that um, how they are structured and just how beautiful it is. And we'll talk more about these photos later and what you're looking for. And I just wanted to cover a few things before we start it, um, just about watercolor in general. And that's that um, we start, we're going to start with the background and then come to the foreground in different layers. And we're going to go usually from lighter to darker. And when you hold your brush in watercolor, don't get way down here like you would for a pen. You're going to hold it loosely. So you're going to kind of have loose strokes. You know, that's a really important part of this. Um, and also, make sure you keep your water source clean. So if you have to get up and go get clean water, do that whenever you need to because you want to have nice clean water in your, especially one of your cups. So the key to this painting is that we're going to use water, a lot of water. So the paper that we're using is quite thick and heavy. It's a 100% um, cotton cold press watercolor paper. And uh, part of what we're going to do is um, use water to paint with and then we'll fill in color in the puddles of water that we make. And that way it'll blend on the paper. I'm going to talk to you about what we have for supplies first. We always need paper towel. I like to fold up a little piece of paper towel and have it right by my palette so that I can keep my brushes on it. And you have to have water. Keep two pots of water. Um, one that you'll use to swish your brush clean and you'll need to change that one more often. And then you keep this one quite clean because you're going to use it for washing and diluting. So you don't want to have any color in it. Um, also a Kleenex. When you're ready to, when you're doing your painting and you want to pick up, like you have a puddle of water, you can just rip off a piece of Kleenex and dab it like this. The colors we're going to use are lemon yellow, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, some violet or purple, and then three that are in the red family, crimson red, um, cadmium red, and your, your red might, this red for you will probably be a, um, a rose color, cadmium red and a burnt umber. And the other thing you're going to have is a sp um, spray bottle, and you'll be sharing these. I didn't buy one for each of you. And some masking tape. And we're going to move over here. You have a, you'll have a pencil, which draws lighter. It's not a number three, it's a six. An eraser. And you're going to have two brushes, and you'll get to take these home. You have two round brushes. One's a number four, and these are particular for watercolor, and a number two. And we're going to use just a cheap foam brush to wet our paper. In your little medicine cup, we're going to have some of this masking fluid, and this is used to um, cover over the places that we want to keep white. Um, and the tools you're going to use to apply it are some toothpicks and some um, Q-tips. Okay, so to prepare the paper, and you can just um, look at this and sketch it yourself if you want to. But I've made a pattern for each of you in case you're feeling a little uncertain about um, drawing. If you take, take your pattern like this and on the opposite side, on the back side, just scribble every place where there's anything drawn. Okay, so when we scribble on the back, use a number two pencil. And then we're going to transfer it onto our watercolor paper. And it won't be real dark, but it'll be good enough. We'll be able to see where those shapes are. I'll just do that quick a minute. We have three poppy shapes, three little daisies, 
three seed heads and three buds. Those are the things that we're going to paint in the final stage. And so we do not want them to be colored over with all this background that we're putting in. So I've got that all scribbled on the back side and I'm laying it on top of my uh, expensive watercolor paper and I'm just going to trace it, all those lines, so that I can know where those areas are that I need to use the masking fluid on. And you don't have to be exactly the way that I did it. You know, you can be a little creative because um, poppies are very irregular and so we don't need to have exact duplication. You'll notice that these stems on these things are very short and that's because we don't really want the stems to be long. They're just going to be kind of poking out of the background and if we go with a really long stem it will just look more, oh I don't know, too rigid. We want to be a little loose in our painting today. So just kind of get this on there. There's kind of a rule of threes in art. It's just pleasant to have three of something rather than an even number. So gone with three pop, big poppies in the foreground, three little daisies, and three poppy um, seed pods, and three poppy buds. The next thing we're going to do is um, we have our pattern traced or, or sketched on our paper. We're going to take this uh, masking fluid and the Q-tips and the toothpicks. We're going to use those tools to just fill in these spaces. So, you know, it's, you don't have to be exact, you know, but you do want to get, a, you know, cover those areas. And when it really gets small and you're Q-tip won't work for you, go ahead and um, use your, I mean when your Q-tip won't work, use your Q-tip <laughs> toothpick. <laughs> Not doing this right. You just cover the whole area of the poppy. Draw some of that down into the stem a little bit. This takes a little while to dry, so we can't really do anything else on this until it is dry. So we'll leave it alone a little while after we get all of these things masked, and then we will we'll work on the paint, getting the paint ready. We don't use a I don't really like to use a um, paintbrush for this stuff because it ruins a paintbrush. It just um, builds up on it. It's really weird. It's like a combination of Elmer's glue and rubber cement because after it dries it will stay white but we'll be able to peel it off toward the end of the painting so that that area is maintained as white space. Most watercolor artists do not use white paint, except for rare circumstances, like maybe to um, put in stars in a night scene or um, snow in a snowy scene. But usually 
they just al allow the to keep the white. They keep a white in their picture. It's good to have white space. All right, I'm going to use my Q-tip again. for the larger areas. You see, if you ever get this on a place you don't want, it's easy to peel it off later once it's dry. It doesn't really matter. You can get rid of it. Bring those stems down a little ways. And then just take your um, Toothpick and just do some random stems, just so you'll have some white space maintained in your painting when you're done. And there's no um, right or wrong here. You can, you know, just do some dots once in a while too. Those would be cool. You can use either end of your toothpick for that. I'll do one more. Okay. So I'm done with that. Now this has to dry, but no, the other part of the masking that we're going to do is, is that we're going to cover the edges of this painting with masking tape so that we keep a white border around the edge. You can see the white border there. That's where it was taped off. So what I like to use is cheap dollar store masking tape. It um, isn't very tacky. And so it comes off the paper without ruining it. So just get a good seal and tape this all the way around. Be careful not to touch the side or the parts of it that you've already painted with that masking. And you're going to be taping this directly to the table. I'm up on a slant so you can see in the camera. When you're at this point, take your pencil and up here in the left upper corner, just draw a little sunshine on your tape. Not on your paper, but on your tape. That's to remind you that as we're looking at this, we want the sun the direction of the light to be coming from the upper left so that as we look at these poppy head, these poppy flowers, there's going to be a rim of light around the top of the petals. And so we want to keep that in mind also as we paint these um, seed heads and the buds that the lighter colors are going to be on the left and a darker color on the right because that's going to be the shadow. Um, I do have some reference photos for this, and um, we'll show those to you as well to get you, you know, refresh in your mind what poppies look like and all these things. So we'll take a look at that a minute. The photos that you're seeing are of um, poppies in a meadow, and uh, they will give us ideas about what we're looking for. We're not going to be exact with this. It's just a loose painting, which means it's kind of abstract. Um, but you can see that there's sort of blue sky at the top and more green toward the bottom. Um, the background, the back, further back um, poppies and things are not as distinct. And the ones up close where we can see what a poppy looks like and how the, how, you know, we, loose and weavy the petals are. There's some, sometimes a rim of light around the top of the petals and then there's a dark center. Um, so that's what we're going to try to do. All right, now it's time to prepare our paint. Um, we obviously need some green, and we don't have green in our palette. We're going to make green. Most watercolor artists don't buy green. They make it out of yellow and blue. So 
Um, mostly it needs to be yellow. And then we're going to take some of the cobalt green first because we, this is a lighter blue and we don't want a whole lot of it. And just mix it together and see how we do. It's pretty dark. You can always lighten it up by just adding more water. Okay, that's good to start. We will be making some um, darker green out of the ultramarine blue and the yellow later. When you're rinsing your brush out, um, you know, give it some good action. If you do like a figure eight, it's supposed to work faster. You always want to have another paper towel, which is just loose. Um, that you can wipe your brush off on. Make sure it's clean. If your paper comes out clean, then you know your brush is clean. Um, that's good. We're going to start there. We've got some yellow that we can use. We've got some the cobalt blue and some green ready and the reds are ready. And we're going to see if our... Um, we got to make sure that that masking fluid is dry. Okay, I've hooked up a hair dryer and we'll have, we have hair dryers today on the counters and you'll need to just um, bring one to your table so that you can dry, dry your papers at this point. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is use our clean water and, our, and your um, foam brush and get this whole paper wet. So we're just um, going to go back and forth and up and down. Let's go right over that masking and get the whole thing wet. Good to go both directions. Okay, now you can kind of see in the, sh the shine, the sheen of it, that it's all pretty evenly wet. We want that to soak in a little bit. And we're not going to need that brush again. From now on, if we need to wet the paper more because it's getting too dry, we're going to use our mist sprayer. Okay, we need to add a little water to our cobalt blue. So we're going to put in some blue for the sky. And what we're going to do is just kind of drop that blue in. The, the whole paper is wet and we just want to take our number four brush, our larger brush. And that wasn't very dilute. You could dilute it more. I think be, you'll be happier with it if it's a little waterier. And just put some in along the top. It doesn't have to be even or anything. We're just um, kind of making a suggestion that there's sky there. I got a little too much over here. I think I will blot some of that off. It's a little heavy. And see the pattern of that paper towel. Okay, good. Clean your brush. Now we're going to take some of our clean water and water down some of this yellow. And what we're going to do is make some, you know, suggestions of grass. So it's just, you know, that some sweeping strokes across. Some blue in there so it turns green. Just have fun. It doesn't really matter how much you do. Just want some yellow in that area, in the mid, mid range. And then next, we're going to do some green. Um, so you can see the green is there's some um, suggestion of 
leaves in the background, so we're gonna we're gonna need to really water down some of this green we made. We don't want it to be real heavy duty. Just some the same area. And watercolor will always be lighter when it dries. So don't be too afraid if you get um, kind of a, a dark streak of color because it will be lighter when it dries. There, I got some blue there. <laughs> Maybe I'll add some yellow to that blue. Some green. Okay. Now we're going to add some distant poppies. There's some um, areas here that are really really light red and that mixed right into the background and I'm noticing that my paper is starting to get a little dry so I'm going to take my mist sprayer and you know from about 10 inches away just give it a nice spray and that will help all these colors bleed into one another and that's really what we want at this stage we don't want anything real specific now what I'm going to do is um, water down some of this cadmium red and I do want it quite watery, so I'm going to keep watering it down a little bit. And then I'm just going to add some red blotches in here every so often. And that's just a suggestion that in the way background, there are poppies in this field that aren't all real close up. They'll just, um, you know, find their way in this paper. And since my paper is slanted, they seem to want to all come down. That's okay. All right. Now we also want to paint those poppy seed heads and um, or some suggest some distant seed heads. So we're just going to put a few of those, you know, that round shapes and oval shapes to say, you know, back inside there and the different places there are some that are back farther as well. All right, and the next thing we're going to do is use stronger color because we're going into the midground. So we've gotten the background um, in there, but we need to step toward us now. Um, it's a little closer in for our next phase. Okay, you can see that I've, I've cleaned my water, got fresh water, and I've also cleaned up my palette a little bit. I didn't like how the cobalt blue was running in there, and we're actually mostly done with the cobalt blue. We're going to use an ultramarine blue from now on, so um, we have to make quite a bit of green. Our um, next step is to do the mid-ground. So that means we're using stronger colors, not as diluted. Um, and what we want to do is make some leaves. So we're going to mix um, some lemon yellow with the ultramarine blue. And we'll just mix it right here next to the, um, this other green. So we'll still have some lighter green there. We don't need a whole lot of blue with that. I think I got too much. It's always a challenge, isn't it? to get the green that we want. I'm going to have to get more yellow in there. Okay, that's coming. I'm going to make a little lighter puddle over here. All right. Next we want to do some random leaf shapes and we're going to switch now to the number two brush, which is a smaller one. Okay, still a round brush. Get it wet first, um, wipe it off, and then get it in your kind of a lighter, weaker green of those. And we're going to put in some shapes that are going to still fade into the background some. It's going to be like these kind of leaf shapes that still blend in because it's wet. 
but it's not as wet as it was and we want to be a little more like leaves so we're expecting it to um, lines we can you know, do some curvy things just be creative we're not making specific leaves for any specific plants and I think I'll we, we still want it to blend a little, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a slight spray so it's getting kind of dry. Now I want to make, I have kind of a, whoops, brought more blue in, a darker area here in my palette where I had a little bit more of the ultramarine blue. And I want to do some more leaf shapes. Um, but I want them to be a little thicker and darker. We're, we're coming toward the viewer. So you can see it's a little bluer. It's still rather random though, but we're going to go down a little lower on the page. A little darker, different directions. There's really no right or wrong here. Just play. My paper is getting kind of dry. And they're a little thicker, as you can see. We're going to put one down here. Okay. All right. We want to keep it damp still, so keep it misted. And then um, take your smaller brush and <clears throat> take a little bit of um, diluted bluish greenish and just fill in some of these areas that don't have any color. You don't have to do all of them, just want to do a few to fill this in a little bit. We don't need all the white spaces filled in, but we don't want that much white in the foreground. We're just going to do a little filling here. And if we did it all in green, we'd kind of lose our leaves. So we'll do a little bit white. OK. Right. We're moving toward the foreground. So the next thing we want to do is bring some mid-ground poppies into this picture. So we're going to, uh, we can take our crimson red. It's going to be a little, um, or your other red color, whatever that one is called. It might be a, a rose, but a little thicker, not quite so diluted. And we're going to put in a few poppies that would be closer to the viewer. Now these are just going to again be um, fairly random shapes. We're not really specific here, but we're just they're, they're going to blend in. They're, they're background poppies or mid-ground poppies, I guess is what we're calling them. And, you know, don't make it real symmetrical. I have a hard time with that. I like to be symmetrical. And see how they're bleeding nicely? That's good. We want that to happen. All right. We're going to take some of this violet, kind of dilute, and drop it in um, to be suggestions of some little purple flowers that would be in the, in the background, too. Just random. You kind of put them where the yellow is. That looks nice. And it should, you know, blend in. That's where we need to stop at this point, and we need to make sure that everything is totally dry before we move to the next stage. So what we are going to have to do is take turns with the hair dryers, and you don't really want to use your hair dryer to push the paint. Um, so until it until it gets somewhat set. Um, just use it on low, and then after everything's kind of in place, you can finish drying it with high butt. Um, you don't really want to spread that stuff out too much.
If you weren't doing this with a hair dryer, it would probably take about an hour for it to dry before we could do the next part. We need it to be totally dry before we can take that masking off. Okay, so it's time to remove the masking on the poppy shapes and the seed buds and these little um, white lines that I put in there. To, to get it off, you just rub it. It's kind of fun. You just rub it until it's all off. Um, I have one large poppy shape left to do. I'll show you. I just kind of peel it off. Kind of gummy. If you don't have really good watercolor paper, or if you didn't have your paper really dry when you put the masking on or when you're taking it off, it sometimes can peel paper off with it. And really, we don't want that to happen. And I think I'm doing okay here today. And it looks like a glob like that when you take it off. All right, so I've got some wet paint in there yet. We should um, fill, fill your paper. If it's dry, it should feel cool. And then we're ready to go on to the next step, which is our foreground. So what we're going to do is a technique where you paint with water with one brush, and then you drop in color with um, another brush. So the whole painting's not wet now, but we're just going to work in um, individual shapes. So I'm going to take my small brush to paint with water. Um, and what I want to do is paint not quite up to the edge where the, um, I'm going to leave a little white space dry because I'm going to be um, filling in this space that I'm painting with water with deep red pigment and I want a little rim of white to show. Now it's a little bit pink so you can see it. Can you, I hope you can see where I've painted. Now I'm going to take my other brush, go into some nice deep crimson red and drop it in. And it should fill in that space that I've made but not go all the way to the edge. That's kind of the key to this painting. Is it makes those poppies look like they're really um, standing out and really forward. So I'm going to switch brushes. I don't need to rinse that out. I'll use my clean one next again. And I'm going to do another petal in front of that one. And I, and again, would like to leave a little white along the top edge where the sun would be hitting that flower. I can come all the way to the edges you know, for the rest of it. I switch to my painting brush. Get into that nice intense color. And as I fill that in, it leaves that nice white edge. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to move on to uh, another one over here. This one had a little bit of a different pattern to it. Um, you know, everybody's poppies are going to look different. I've got a little one leaf, one petal over here, which I'm going to paint first. I think I'll try using that my other red for this one, just for variety. I don't really want to try to hit that other red, but if I do, that's not the end of the world. Bring that down a little bit.
<laughs> Since my paper is slanted, it really is puddling down toward me. A lot of times in watercolor, you paint with water first, and then you add the paint into that space. It's very cool. And you never know exactly what's going to happen with watercolor because it's very mobile. A little hard to predict. Okay, we got our second poppy shape. Got one more big one. Hmm, let's see. I'm gonna just we'll just do one front and one back puddle here. Remember the light is coming from the left upper corner, so we want to make sure we have some white edges on our petals over there. <laughs> One turned out a little odd. All right. I'll wash out our brushes. So the next thing we're going to do is the stems to those big poppies. And we want to get a, a, some shadow coming in at the bottom of the poppies. So what we need to do is make a dark color. You can make a dark color by um, adding the ultramarine blue to some burnt umber, which is kind of a brown. So we're going to make a black darker color here. Okay, and that's a good shadow color. I don't know if I really want this to be totally black. I'd like to add a little green to it because it's going to go into the stem. What will this do? We want it to be a pretty intense color. Okay. And what we're going to do is just let that bleed up into the poppy and then just bring it down into the stem a little bit. want that red to draw it up. Maybe I'll need to tip my painting more. Just let it come off the brush. I'm going to tip the painting up this way for a little while. You can have a lot of fun with um, watercolor interaction with the paper and the wetness by just changing the direction of it for a while. It really affect how it bleeds. Let's see if we can get that. To be a little more interesting. Ooh. Okay. There we go. All right. Now the tops of the seed heads are going to be purple. So we're going to take a little of our violet. 
with a smaller brush and just needs to be a little more dilute than that. Just paint that little top part. Uh, there's three of them. So that's a little bit that we saved as white. We want that to dry. Okay. All right. And then we want to paint the um, these buds. Okay, so we have um, put dropped in some dark color for a shadow and then extended it into the stems. We're going to add a little of the green to just extend that stem down a little bit so it's not so dark. It's really difficult, I think, to not overdo it with stems. You really have to use just the very tip of the brush. So the next thing we want to do is um, paint these uh, buds and the seed heads. And the color we want to do is going to be a lighter green, a more watery green on the left side because that's where the light is. And then we'll use a darker paint on the right side. So we're just using a watery mix on the left hand side of these things and just going down to the stem a little bit. one over here. And one right there. Then I want to um, use a darker green, bring in some more of the ultramarine blue. To darken that up. It's very blue. <laughs> It'll be, it's got to kind of play around with your palette to get the color that you need. We don't want to water it down too much, but I want it to be a darker green. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, then I want to bring that in to the right hand side, the shadow side of these, and let it blend together. Just let it kind of organically flow together. So you want to work on this before, you know, you want to add this darker side before the lighter side gets dry so it will actually go in together and blend. Here's one. Okay, I think I got all those. Okay, now um, we're going to work on the daisies next. Make sure that your brush is really lemon yellow. And just do the very top. It could be a little darker. We're seeing these from the side view. Okay. And then take a smidgen of the red and blend it into a corner of your yellow section to get some warmer yellow. And we'll just um, just touch the, the bottom edge 
just to warm those up a little bit. Now those are going to need to dry a little bit, so we'll leave them alone. Okay, so to make the petals of these um, little daisies stand out, we can take a little, or with our thin brush, take a little bit of watery, not too much. We, you know, wipe it off on your paper towel so that you're not getting it real heavy duty because we're just going to take a little bit with the very tip of the brush and do like a V shape around those petals so they stand out from the background. See how that just makes it look three dimensional? We'll just do that on each of those. Just the bottom, just like a little. Now those are getting a little too distinct, I think. So what I'm going to do is take my Kleenex. Where'd my Kleenex go? <laughs> there it is. If I ever get anything on too heavy, I can just, while it's still wet, I can just try to blot it up a little bit. That didn't work. I'll show you another technique to do that. We'll take our dry brush, our, I mean our brush that's been rinsed out, it's a little bit damp, and I can just paint, not quite damp enough, the edge of that which I painted, and just um, blend it out a little bit. Not really working. I got too wet. Well, we'll see if that'll change at all. We still need another one over here, though. A little wet in there. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> I'm not real expert at that, but I think it looks a little bit like it's supposed to. The other thing you can do is take a little bit of the green and do a little bit of a dab in there to make that even more three dimensional on the dark side. Okay, well, we're done with those. We need to finish the big poppies. We need to put some um, centers in the big poppies. You know how there's a black center. So we can use that black paint that we made again um, in that corner of our palette. And while our poppies are still damp, we need to just kind of drop this in along the white, not over the white and let that become the center of the poppy and it's going to bleed in to the poppy. This one kind of went together. We'll see what that does. I'm not sure. I'll try to make a center there. I'm sure you would even see it. I want to have a medium green now so I'm going to take a little spot of that blue and mix it in with my lemon yellow that's left to make kind of a little lighter green with my narrower brush. And now we're just going to do some scribbles, some light touch grasses that are going to be in the foreground. And so you just have to be brave now and just try to get your brush loaded enough that it won't run out of paint while you're making your you know, just don't go too fast. A couple of these strokes that make it look like. And you can go off the edge on the bottom and it will look like it's um, actually growing there. Oh, let's see. I got a little bit more. Try to... Well, I think we're done. Maybe I'll do one over here where this white spot, uh, this white streak that I made, which I didn't really fill in yet. You can try to get those. 
Okay, good. Another thing to tell you is not to leave your brushes in the water. That's really bad for them, so don't let them sit in there on their bristles. Just try to get them really clean and then lay them down. And the next thing we need to do is um, get it, let it dry. But I think the whole edges are dry, so I think we can take off the tape now, and that's always the fun part. See how it looks, and then when it's dry enough, you need to sign your work. When you're taking the tape off, especially if it's tackier tape than this, make sure that you pull it this direction, not directly down. Keep it at an angle, and that will keep you from pulling off a layer of the paper. <laughs> and there you go. And then we have a few of these pens, pens around, and I think it's good to identify who made this painting, so you can put your signature on it. And these paintings are dimensions 9 by 12, and it is possible to get 9 by 12 frames at um, Michael's, if you want to just frame yours and, and enjoy it.